Okay, well, thank you all very much uh, for coming out on Halloween. And I see some of you have worn orange best of colors. I put a little the salt orange. I don't want to actually it's um, But, uh, <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. Um, we've had a great, we had a great session with the community the other night. Um, we had a tremendous turnout. I think we were the largest turnout of the entire I know. Challenge Maggie's and <laughs> Maggie's does But we had a we had a really good response and I, I wanted to go over just very briefly some of the highlights of that conversation uh, that we had with the community. First uh, I, there's obviously great pride in Madisonville among the people who live there. But, uh, uh, some of the discussion centered around the fact that it's a very diverse community. Uh, they welcome people all uh, manner of life, uh, all stages of life, uh, the wealthy, the poor, uh, you know, every, every, everyone is welcome in, in Madisonville, and there's a place to live there for, for just about everybody. Um, there seems to be a great uh, community spirit there. Um, you have some tremendous assets in the community. Uh, uh, the library is a very beautiful building. Uh, you have some very historic buildings. You have excellent access from the interstate system. Uh, there are some major employers that have moved in uh, recently. MedPace, um, Gorilla Glue, which fascinates me. That Gorilla Glue is a terrific uh, business. Um, and um, uh, so there are, there's a lot of employment in that part of Cincinnati. You also have, uh, are, are very close to some very wealthy neighborhoods with very high demographics. Uh, which is an asset because a lot of the people who live in those communities drive through Madisonville on their way to wherever they're going. Madisonville also has a very urban feeling in places, but also a very rural feeling in places. You have a lot of trees, uh, you have some ravines and other very interesting natural features, wooded hillsides, but at the same time Madisonville is fairly flat uh, in certain areas, so it's very walkable. <coughs> They have a great history there. We, we've been introduced to a little bit of the history, such as the famous train wreck on Wet, uh, Wetzel Avenue back in 1910 that took out the corner of one of the buildings here. There's some fascinating episodes in, in your history. And, um, and people have been telling us a little bit about that during the week. Um, you have very good housing stock that, is, that welcomes people of all ages. And you can sometimes have three generations living in one house. Madisonville. You see that actually more and more now. Um, what are some of the weaknesses and problems with with uh, <coughs> Madisonville now? Well, you, you're you really are in need of a downtown. A lot, a lot of the buildings have been demolished. There are some uh, historic buildings remaining, some of the old architecture, but a lot has been uh, demolished. There's a lack of uh, retail, lack of restaurants. Uh, there's high-speed traffic on Madison, so it's uh, difficult for pedestrians to cross Madison, particularly at Stewart, Anderson Place. Um, it's a little wider as a street than in some other communities. It's about I think, 48 feet from curb to curb, um, and there are some dead-end streets and some pockets of criminal activity. In fact, uh, some of our community members pointed out some intersections that, where there's some active pharmaceutical uh, trade going on. <laughs> and, and so we're aware of, of where those are. There are vacant houses. And people aren't out and about uh, very much in the center of town because there just isn't a reason to be out and about. Um, and someone wrote that there's a lack of a stylish, higher density housing much of the housing stock is old now. And, uh, so that implies that you would welcome new housing, um, new modern housing, new housing that would appeal to the marketplace. So then we asked people to talk about what their visions were for the future. You want to be able to go out on a date on a Friday or Saturday night. Yes. So you want to be able to walk out of your house, go to a restaurant, have a nice meal, sit down, and then maybe afterwards go to maybe a, a, a bar might be, have some live music or go to a movie theater or something. So 
you want that whole experience that is that should be in your in your town center. So that what does that mean? That means you need some sit down restaurants, maybe a coffee shop. Uh, folks suggested antique stores for for shopping, and maybe a clothing store, a pub or two. Um, also, an interest in a family event center of some sort. But all of these could be grouped around a public square, some sort of community gathering place that you don't have now, but that you're, you're, you're longing for, where you could have outdoor community events around the, around the year. Uh, that might include a farmer's market, it might include a small outdoor concert, an outdoor movie, um, any number of uh, community-related activities, maybe a little art um, festival of some sort. <laughs> there should also, we, we should also think about uh, small business incubator space uh, for new business startups or, or for small offices that might need two to 5,000 square feet of space that might be beneficial to people who live there, doctor's offices, lawyer's offices, accountants, that sort of thing. Um, pleasant streetscapes, a pleasant walking experience in the community. And then some architecture that builds on the architectural heritage of Madison Village has a great collection of Italianate architecture. And uh, as someone wrote, I don't know who it was, wrote a very detailed description of what the architecture should be like in Madison Village. Brick architecture with stone trim, um, with um, uh, interesting roofscapes, um, with um, appropriate window sills, and then you got into the design of storefronts. The storefronts composed of the proper storefront elements with transom windows and so on. I, you seldom see that from the communities that uh, you know, a detailed specification of what new architecture should be like. So I, that's terrific. It's building on the architectural traditions of, of the community. Awnings and proper signage. Try and get rid of billboards. Good luck with that. Maybe, maybe you'll be able to. And then um, finally, an identity for the community that is currently lacking. So uh, we, we uh, learned a few additional things after our, our uh, we, we summarized a lot of this here, which you can come up and read a little bit later, what I, I just essentially went through all this material. We learned a few things. We learned that um, there is a building, uh, uh, a closed building that might become a uh, community art center here at Sierra and Wetzel. Uh, that's an initiative underway. There's a gentleman who would like to open a coffee and wine shop down here. We also um, uh, learned uh, a little bit about the history of Wetzel itself. And there was also, uh, there's been a lot of planning in the community of the day. Uh, um, we, although we're concentrating on uh, your downtown district, Madisonville has been planning for uh, many years, and you have strategies all throughout your community for uh, redevelopment initiatives, for new infrastructure like trails and passageways and so on that we simply have not had time to get into. Our, our mandate is to really look at your downtown area in this particular study. So I don't want to cut, it, cut any of that short at all. It's all extremely important. And hopefully this, some of this information will inform the rest of your, will, will add, be added to the rest of your planning to, to uh, complete the picture for Madisonville. Folks gave us some images and visions for the future of the community that were produced by uh, others in the past. The idea of a public plaza, beautiful drawing here showing a new building with a porch that opens out onto a park space. Uh, this on Wetzel, um, an aerial view of what Madisonville could look like in the future. So we looked at all that very carefully. 